It is Thursday, December 8th, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Today, I uh, wanted to do a quick update and talk a little bit about the latest release of TypeScript 2.1, uh, which is very cool stuff. Uh, it's just, I want to just go over it with you guys so you kind of get familiar. Um, each feature is just super cool. It's great to know that these things are being done. So let's go ahead and uh, first talk to talk a little bit about async functions. Uh, I've done some videos recently talking about async await. And so if you want to see uh, any of that, go back to some of my previous videos. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's probably one of the coolest features um, for any language uh, it, when we're talking about asynchronous programming. But some of the really fun ones that have come out are this, like, for example, uh, object rest and spread. This is super cool stuff. You know, we've all probably done, at least if you've done any JavaScript stuff, you've probably written a function or consumed a function that creates a copy or merges uh, code to, you know, merges a map together. Well, now you can use this, uh, uh, you know, rest and spread uh, operator to, again, just like this show here, you can take the original and do dot, dot, dot in the front. And this will literally will, under the hood, create a copy of that code for you or a copy of that map, which is great. And then you can do this over and over again with other uh, maps, which you can basically merge things together. You can do really cool things like, oh, I want to take... Um, you know, one and, and add another and add more and add more. And, and as they say here, the, the main thing is that you have to watch out is that the the later spread, things that come to the, the last thing will be the one that is the, um, the the final version, right? So if you did hello again uh, in any at any point, then it would be that last um, value. But very cool stuff, you know, just nice syntax. You don't have to write your own function to do this. Um, it's, could be a time, it can be a time saver as well as just nice syntax. So we can see a little bit more here. Now we get into some really interesting things. And this is uh, good to know because in preparation for some of the uh, mapped types that are coming up. So key of is basically, as it shows here, um, let's say you have this interface that says, okay, I'm this, this, and this, right? Name, age, and location, right? Well, if we say prop name key of person, then as it says here, the equivalent is going to be those three, uh, those three as essentially literals, which is very cool. You know, it's like, oh yeah, okay. Uh, I know now that, um, you know, it can only be one of those, you know, one of those three. Very slick. You know, this is something that can be used quite often uh, when we're talking about different types. So again, the key of operator is something new and very cool. All right, so moving on here. Um, let's see here. They just talk more a little bit about the different index types. Um, okay, so you can, this seems, oh, so you can say the same thing. You can say, hey, it's the same thing as uh, age property, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and again, more key of stuff. Uh, very cool. So then we get into mapped types. This has been a really interesting one to follow. Um, I admit, it, even my brain is not 100% on this, but basically what map types are allowing you to do is essentially set the rules by which a map behaves. So like they're saying here, let's say we have a person type, right? And much of the time we want to take an existing type and make each of its properties entirely optional. With person, we might want to write the following. So some of these cool things that map types introduce is some of these default kind of automatic benefits, right? Like, oh, okay, from here to here, we're going to allow you to say all of the properties that you've already predefined are now partial. And, and that's actually a very simple, they have a type for that now that allows you to do that. You just kind of wrap it in a partial, um, it, it literally, there's a, there's a class, there's an interface called partial. And then the result is whatever that thing was and then all of these being uh, optional. You can do the same thing with read only uh, and that'll that'll work as well. And if you use the object dot uh, freeze uh, function, then it automatically does this for you. It defines, oh, okay, you now have an object that's read only. That's very cool because, you know, I, I actually personally use object freeze a lot. So the um, subsequent use of it now the compiler understands that, oh, by the way, you can't write to this because you've essentially frozen it, right? 
Um, again, some really interesting stuff. I again, I wrap to the advanced things about map types. Here we go. We get into being able to define. Uh, you know, okay, P is, seems to be the, the standard syntax, right? So, uh, in key of person, um, basically means that um, the different keys uh, of, of person will be, uh, a, the result will be a Boolean, right? So, just like we talked about before, where they were talking about the key of, by saying, um, you know, P in key of person, that'll be the, the different keys from that map, but the result will, be a, will always be a Boolean. Um, and again, they kind of show this same thing and then we can ge they generalize it. So you see this a lot, like some really cool tools where you just go, hey, partial or whatever you want to do. And it, it essentially applies these rules. It, so they're modifiers to different types. And for people that will be using this more often, I'm sure they're just celebrating and going, oh, my God, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah, here we go again. So partial, basically partial is saying when you when you wrap a type by using this uh, the generic you're going to say hey my person partial then putting person here you're going to get those properties of person and they're going to be converted to uh optional and this is one i, I believe is built in to 2.1 right so they have some really interesting built-in ones and let's see easier imports right that's i mean always great um let's see and that's pretty much the major uh major bits of it now there are some other really interesting ones that are happening um, that they don't really talk about here too much. Uh, but those are the major things. Uh, again, I really like this spread operator. I think that's pretty cool stuff. It's very nice if you're, you just want to save some time and you don't want to like, oh God, I got to write a, a whole for loop to, to map these, these new properties and stuff. So that's it for today. Just wanted to update people. Um, it's again, TypeScript's doing great things. And we're seeing a lot of um, more stuff happening in probably 2.2 and, you know, when that comes out as well. Thanks and have a great day.